Okay, so let's get started again. So we were looking into large eddy simulations in the last class, right? So we managed to get a governing equation for LES, which is filtered Navier-Stokes equations. And we briefly discussed uh, the difference between resolved component, uh, residual component, SGS component and all these things. So today we will see uh, what are the factors that affect LES result. Okay. So factors that affect LES. So the first one is the filter type, okay, the one you choose, filter type and obviously the filter size just like the grid size, the filter size and what is the third one? This is turbulence modeling, are we modeling anything in LES? SGS model. So the choice of filter type and choice of SGS model can give you a slightly different results. Okay. Of course, it depends on the filter size that is also your choice. So we will see what are the choices of filter type first for you. Okay. So filter type. Um, essentially, there are two popular filters that we use. One is called a box filter. The other one is a spectral filter. Some may use a Gaussian filter and so on. So there is a general uh, definition for uh, a filter that is uh, given by Leonard. So let us take that one and then that will tell us what different types we can use. Okay. So a generic definition, generic filter definition one dimensional filter by Leonard 1974. So any quantity phi of x filtered over bar is filtering is equal to minus infinity to infinity the integration applies over the entire flow domain and then you get a filter kernel or a filter function g of r and the variable that you are filtering x minus r dr here r is a spatial variable as i said earlier r is a spatial variable okay and here the first thing is the integration applies over the entire flow domain so integration is over the entire flow domain and this G of R, the filter kernel that decides what filter you are using, box filter or spectral filter. So the G of R is the filter kernel or filter function ok. So now we can see the examples of different filters by choosing a different G of R or the filter kernel. So the first option as I said is this box filter, ok, box filter, you can call this let us say equation 1. So in a box filter, uh, 
the g of r will take the value it takes the value 1 by delta delta is the filter size it takes g of r will be 1 by delta for all values of r less than or equal to delta by 2 okay so where delta is your filter size so what does this mean let's give an illustration so zero otherwise okay zero otherwise let's call this uh, let me just move this a bit let's equation 2 so what this implies is if i give an illustration let's say i take um, let's say i take a grid let's say this is your mesh these are the node points so this is the mesh on which you are computing your uh, your les calculation then the filter is let's say i am using uh, delta the filter size delta is equal to 2 delta x by 2 delta y let's say so then the filter size i can say the filter size is this much it is twice that of your grid size okay so i can say this is your filter size delta okay and this is your delta x delta y you understand what it means now r is in between delta by 2 on either side here okay then only it will be delta will be equal to 2 delta x by 2 delta y in this particular case let's say equidistant so it takes the filter function takes value 1 by delta otherwise it takes zero value okay so this you can see that it is uh, in a physical space that is in terms of your delta x delta y being in uh, millimeters or micrometers in physical space this is sharp but not in a spectral space because sometimes turbulence data is taken in a spectral space when we look into energy spectrum so you measure uh, from les let's say you are computing the velocity signals velocity fluctuations this fluctuation uh, velocity fluctuation signals can be uh, you can use a uh, fast Fourier transform to take it into a Fourier space or a spectral space where instead of this millimeters micrometers distances will be in wave number space. So you will plot energy at a particular wave number versus wave number in that uh, x and y coordinate system right instead of eddy size versus energy how much energy is associated with each eddy size uh, versus let us say its length you would have energy as a function of wave number versus wave number in a wave number space so sometimes you would also do that you compute data in real space and then use a, a fourier transform to take the data into spectral space so box filter advantage is it is sharp in physical space you know what is the uh, length at which or, or the size at which your filtering operation is being performed what is its length width and everything right so you can take a note here box filter is sharp in physical space but not in wave number space
okay so then we see uh, which one will be sharp in wave number space that is the second option that is if you want to choose a spectral filter um, that is sometimes the code itself will be in a, a spectral code uh, for example navier stokes equation you can apply a fourier transform take the governing equation in fourier space and then discretize and solve this technique is what is usually called a, you know, a pseudo spectral uh, solution uh, or even in a spectral element solution okay so people do that and then you will have the data in that space not in the physical space wave number so there it is applicable to use what is called the spectral filter okay spectral filter so here the filter function g of k k is the wave number usually in spectral space we indicate the parameters with a cap this cap is given in that that well that we are working in wave number space so g cap of k wave number takes a value 1 or 0 it takes 1 when wave number k is less than or equal to the cut off wave number that you choose 0 otherwise okay so where this k where k is the wave number and kc is the cut off wave number that is something you choose just like you choose the filter size delta in physical space cut off wave number is you can choose that up to this uh, wave number you are going to resolve on capture the solution uh, beyond that you are going to model okay or same in real uh, physical space it's the delta you can say okay the delta is 1 mm up to 1 mm i am going to resolve anything like let's say from meters to 1 mm down and below 1 mm 1 mm i am going to model in wave number space you can say the wave number going very large wave numbers to sorry the very small wave numbers it's the other way small wave number indicates large eddy okay you know the wave number to wavelength definition right so the small wave number indicates large eddy from there to a cut off wave number an intermediate eddy right up to that you are going to resolve and anything larger than the cut off wave number will go into let's say dissipative scale those a uh, high wave number dissipative eddies you are not resolving you are going to model okay, that's the idea this is choice is completely up to you whether you want to use a box filter or a spectral filter these are two uh, popular uh, filter types again take a note here this spectral filter is sharp in wave number space but not in physical space okay so here i have just a schematic where the y axis shows the energy uh this is the energy energy spectrum you can say this entire thing is what i'm plotting is called energy spectrum those who do experiments or doing dns les can do this one they have access to fluctuating uh signals velocity signals you can get in get this uh, energy spectrum energy as a function of k k is the wave number here okay so this is the wave number you have this right k so 
So, E as a function of k and x axis is the wave number and k c is your cutoff wave number. So, this is in a logarithmic scale. Generally, when you plot the energy spectrum, you would get this in energetic, let us say in a logarithmic scale. So, this, this energetic eddies or the large eddies containing most of the energy or the energy injection is occurring here at these scales. This is again the energy cascade process or the Kolmogorov hypothesis view where the low wave number or the large eddies here and then that intermediate eddies and the tiny tiny eddies this view large wave number indicating tiny eddies. So, you have the dissipative range, you have the inertial sub range and then the energetic range three ranges according to that hypothesis and this k raised to minus phi third is the slope indicating the inertial range whether your data shows that is immaterial here this is according to the hypothesis your act, your actual data may not actually collide with a k raised to minus phi third or maybe a small fraction of your uh, range uh, wave number range may collide with that one collapse with that okay but the idea is that as already uh, told you in the Kolmogorov hypothesis, the one of the point was that there is a local isotropy at the dissipative range and uh, Kolmogorov has also quantified it how to get those Kolmogorov microscales and there is also a definition of what is called an e inertial range or a universal sub range where the energy that is being uh, going from the energetic range to the inertial range which is purely inertia driven. This is the transfer to down all the way down that is why epsilon SGS. So, SGS we do not have access to these are subgrid scale motion right. So, if I say what is the dissipation rate of subgrid scale I do not have access to this you can get dissipation rate at the resolved at your resolution not at the scale which is smaller than your resolution. So, that epsilon SGS is according to the hypothesis must be coming from the pk SGS. So, basically whatever dissipation is occurring here must be coming from the production rate of k right. So, this is the idea and here uh, what this means this box filter and a uh, spectral filter is. So, let us say there is an eddy here uh, using that filter size it is much more clear to define this in a physical space its exact wave number is not uh, clear right for our understanding and for a if you are using a spectral filter then this cutoff wave number is very sure you know you know what this wave number is but the corresponding eddy is not what you can choose here you can always choose the cutoff wave number there you can actually physically you can think okay this is the eddy size i want to capture right here you have to work with wave numbers if you are choosing a spectral filter okay so now